hello everyone uh, today uh, i have uh, the great <laughs> john paul with me um, uh, fondly known as jp uh, so he has been my payments guru and uh, payments guru for a lot of folks so he invented uh, or he started the uh, the art of teaching payments long before it was very fashionable <laughs> and uh, a lot of people have learned uh, so many things from his blog as well as in person he was my boss at one point uh, mentor and you know a good friend as well so welcome john paul to this chat uh, <laughs> today we're going to be thank you very much for the introduction santosh <laughs> he is also I'm the... very glad to be here <laughs> definitely he is also the author of uh, uh, payment or the blog and uh, pay matrix the Uh, online platform for learning payments so i'll add those descriptions uh, links in the description below um so let's get started john paul this is going to be an informal chat um, about uh, payments and what's going to happen and so on so the first question uh, i have a few questions written down but uh, uh, the first question is uh, yes. how did payments find you or uh, how did you find uh, find payments you know how did that happen I- i've read from uh, your book a-, a little glimpse of what happened uh, in the project and so on but uh, i would uh, very much uh, like to hear it from in person. person you know of course <laughs> yes that's a pretty uh, interesting story for myself mm-hmm. when i finish i graduated from engineering school and i had the opportunity to join accenture in paris mm-hmm. and uh, i really appreciated that at that time i think today too they had five major activities mm-hmm. you know one of them was financial services i know they were doing also product um uh, uh government communication and it then yeah. they asked me which activity would you like to join and i said well i want to join financial services and my first assignment was uh for a private bank mm-hmm. in paris mm-hmm. uh, the creation of a new private bank there was it was a pretty interesting project mm-hmm. and i learned quite a lot uh, in that project and after that i joined another project in private banking and one day um you know after one one project i couldn't find uh the next project right away mm-hmm. so i was kind of sitting around doing some training and then someone called and say hey we need someone for couple of months on a payment project mm-hmm. and uh, would you please <laughs> could you please you know join and help us and then of course you you can you will go back to what you were doing mm. so when i and it was uh, the first payment project that was in 2007 uh, okay and a bank was implementing uh you know the first sepa payment project actually the sepa credit transfer mm-hmm. and that bank was connecting to the two clearing systems in you know that french banks used mm-hmm. for the clearing uh, of sepa payments core and you know core that's the french yeah that's clearing right. system yeah. and then you have uh, step eba two. step 2 yeah. that's the pan european uh, clearing system so I went there but I was supposed to do PMO you know just to do payment <laughs> management office okay and then I stayed after 3 months they were looking for someone to do some testing okay. and then that's yeah. how finally I stayed there and uh yeah I I I stayed for I think 18 months okay. in total and yeah it was a one way flight so <laughs> <laughs> glad that I've happened been, i've been doing only payments and the and the beginning was of course a bit uh, if you don't have the the basis you don't have the notions it's not really easy if you are on a payment project and they are expecting you to deliver value so i i spoke to people i was trying to learn and i was also trying to find books mm-hmm. unfortunately i couldn't find a good book at that time mm-hmm. uh yeah and then you know i i 
was talking to people and learning and learning. And I went from project to project. Mm -hmm. And I've, I was still trying to really understand what's behind, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And it was, a, I would say, I could say that it was a pretty uh, interesting, but long way. It mm -hmm. was, I was sometimes frustrated because yeah. there were many things that I couldn't understand. Yeah. And yeah, then uh, after that, you know, after staying, for one two years on payments projects then i was flagged as the payment guy <laughs> and and during the last years i spent with accenture i was doing only payments okay. and then i moved to other companies you know to capgemini mm -hmm. and i was since then i've been doing payments till today so yeah but i'm very glad finally yeah. you Definitely. know i'm very glad that i did <laughs> I yeah. found that industry. It's a yeah. very, very interesting industry. Yeah, you, you and me have one more thing in common. I also started my career with Accenture. So <laughs> we've, I think <laughs> we've been to three uh, companies. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> great. So uh, the next question is, uh, how has the payments uh, landscape uh, changed from when you started uh, to where it is now? Now it's at, at, at least um, in the last few years, it's now at the peak, I guess, uh, in terms of uh, popularity and you know in terms of uh, yeah, yeah so i would say that i re i started payments when uh, in europe they were implementing the iso 2022 uh, standards mm -hmm. uh, in the sepa areas so they were moving from domestic file uh, formats the majority of them were using flat files at that time yeah. and they were not able to um let's say transport as as main as much data as we can do today with the iso 2022 right. and also uh they had different market infrastructure so with sepa i'm talking of course now about europe only yeah yeah, yeah. you know sepa was really the let's say the movement toward the payment integration mm -hmm. throughout all Europe with the same market infrastructures, with the same standard, with the same rules yeah. um, for companies, customers, for banks uh, uh, in, in the industry. But now I think that we cannot reduce payments to SIPA because mm -hmm. there are just so many things happening in the, mm -hmm. in the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's interesting is to see the impact of technology. Mm -hmm. I think there are two things, there are two major drivers from my point of view uh, for the changes in the industry. The first thing is technology and the second is regulation. Mm -hmm. So technology, uh, behind technology, I, we see clearly internet and the API, mm -hmm. so the application programming interfaces. And internet, we we have a pioneer. It's it's PayPal. Mm. So PayPal started. PayPal was a non-bank, mm -hmm. you know, because actually, True. when we think, in originally only banks in many country could provide payment services. Mm -hmm. That's right. right? Yeah. And then uh, internet came, and then PayPal <laughs> came, and yeah, PayPal today is worth more than many. Banks. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a huge company mm -hmm. doing. I think they do almost over two hundred and fifty billion in revenue, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a huge and PayPal really gave. Um, I think many players were looking at PayPal. What what is PayPal doing? And of course, they wanted to to size the opportunity. Many saw the opportunity, and they wanted to size it. So, mm -hmm. we saw many, uh, I would say, PayPal-like companies <laughs> developing and providing services Definitely, over yeah. the internet. Yeah. And there are many that are, I would say, doing very well today. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. technology, and then um, another thing in the recent years, um, Revolut and transfer wise mm. or wise i think their wise. name is now yeah, wise yeah. the way they are facilitating cross border payments mm -hmm. or um, you know on one app you can have i would say personally maybe 6 7 
different accounts mm -hmm. in the currency of those countries. You know, you, yeah, you can yeah. have an account in USD, get in it, Euro, it, okay. in, in pound sterling, and you can move money out <laughs> between the, those accounts. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the exchange rates are very, very uh, yeah, cheap. Yeah. So, and, re, and receiving a cross-border, making a cross-border payment or receiving a cross-border payment, it's, it's pretty easy. Mm. They have a kind of, I mean, Actually, you can see that as a kind of network of accounts. So they, they have open account in different countries. Correct. But all those accounts are managed in the same software. Yeah. And you so they, 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 they can easily move Germany from, yeah. I don't know, USA to Europe to France or from India to wherever. And it's really changing the game. Mm -hmm. I think why is... Um, is probably one of and and Revolut, huh? Revolut yeah, yeah, they, are, yeah. they are probably uh, the major uh, players, mm -hmm. evolving players in the recent years, mm -hmm. particularly the area of payments. So providing payment services, the traditional ones, but also enabling people to make uh, transaction in currencies very very uh, easily. Yeah. So that that that's that's one thing. Another thing. Let's say, uh, let's continue with technology, Definitely. instant payments. Mm -hmm. When I started um, in payments, you know, instant payments existed. Actually, I learned it recently mm -hmm. that, you know, for example, in countries like Japan, mm -hmm. they had instant payment. But it was not, uh, I, you know, it was not really the hot topics. But then, you know, a few years back, instant payment came. Uh, and now it is implemented in many countries in Europe. Mm. You know, they started in Sweden. In, and of course, technology is very, is an enabler mm -hmm. of such services. And we see that it's not only, you know, uh, the banks or payment service providers that are impacted. We can see the market infrastructures are, are, as well. Mm -hmm. For example, Target 2, they have created as an infrastructure tips you know, the target instant, instant payment, payment services yeah. Yeah, yeah. to provide those services to banks. And we can all core um, declaring systems have also created specific uh, modules or specific, you know, systems to provide, to make instant payments uh, possible. Because actually it's not the same thing as just, you know, making the traditional transfer where you initiate a payment and you expect the money to arrive one two three days sometimes <laughs> in the UK. No, now it's you, not you, possible <laughs> you, click, you click yeah and yeah, yeah, instantly yeah. the guys of course if we describe everything that happens mm -hmm. when the when the payment uh, sender clicks and when the guy on the other side receives it's just, I mean, yeah. there are just so many things. We are all pay, we are payment professionals, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we understand that. But clearly, it shows that technology is is, is really key uh, for those mm -hmm. for those services. Yeah. And last thing, last thing, that is also from my point of view um, a, a major um, uh, change in the recent years is clearly open banking. Definitely. So open banking, and, and that's driven by regulation, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, regulation is in a way forcing banks to open, yeah. to provide API, right? To provide uh, uh, API so that third party payment service providers can access bank accounts of their customers, of mm -hmm. course. I mean, if you are a bank and you are running your business, it's really not what you will appreciate. Uh, I think one CEO said that you don't you don't like to have someone between you and your customers mm -hmm. because actually those new players, you know, the in in Europe they call it PSD two. Yeah, you know, they they yeah. create PSD two is where you find the open banking regulation, but they are similar. Um, initiatives in many uh, areas in the world. Yeah, yeah. And so API is clearly going to change the game. There are new players coming. It is facilitating quite a lot account to account payments. You um, Today, frankly, someone can survive without cards. 
because there are just many possibilities either with the phone or just you know with yeah. the apps <laughs> to to make to initiate a payment 100% so, uh, payments so yeah i mean um that's why payments is so fascinating and that's why you know we keep learning and i really appreciate that you know we never get bored really uh, <laughs> Yeah, and there are yeah, yeah. there are there are things coming. Hey, yeah. maybe one last thing. P twenty seven. Yeah. Maybe you hear about P twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. It's the Nordic a Nordic uh, equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. So they call it instant cross border payments. Yeah. So it's a very <laughs> instant. So yeah. you in the Nordics you can make a payment, for example, between Finland and Sweden. or between of course they are starting but that's the goal mm. i think they are starting with uh they will connect first with switch mm -hmm. which is the instant payment uh infrastructure in sweden mm -hmm. so p37 i think they will start with that. and then they will little by little uh um, enable or uh, let's say um provide access mm. to order to order uh, infrastructures in nord and frankly that's pretty interesting because um of course we are used to instant payment in a domestic context mm -hmm. with the same currency with the same and with p27 i think the world will look at what they are doing mm -hmm. and probably it will you know be an inspiration sure. for other regions uh in the world so yeah, yeah i mean in, in india we have Yeah, yes, in India we have a, a, a UPI which is an API based solution which is which is pretty uh, amazing i mean it's it's top of the class uh, in, in and when it comes to instant payments and almost everybody uses it i was once using cards yeah. now these days i just um, you know um, go and uh, pay with my phone which, which is which is much exactly. more convenient uh, and uh, anyway ha we have a phone uh, in our hand I, and in china like uh, i heard that uh, some stores prefer alipay or wechat over cards they don't accept that's cards true. and so that's that's pretty fascinating that's a different uh, that's the day that uh, we thought will uh, take a longer time you know uh, it's, it's happening in that's 2022 true. yeah and uh, just uh, one more something, question Frankish, yeah. something that we didn't mention cryptocurrencies yeah. i think i just clearly. wanted to talk about that uh, in in the yes, in the coming questions uh, but before that i wanted to uh, ask you about uh, instant payments in europe which is it's quite fascinating we have the sapa instant scheme which which is facilitating which is a common standard but how uh, not every bank in uh, europe is adopting to instant payments because they deem uh, it a uh, little expensive uh, uh, than other uh, and regular form of payments how do you think the adoption is happening right now uh, is it in industry driven or is it customer driven uh, and how fast are the banks in europe adopting to sepa instant payments that's a question that i really wanted to ask you because you you, you are yes. there and you are using so, it and uh, yeah you're also implementing it uh, in in certain cases yeah yes yeah, so uh first thing in sepa we have mandatory uh scheme yes. which are the schemes that uh payment service providers are supposed you know to provide for example the sepa classic sepa credit transfer scheme um if you provide credit transfer in europe you must provide yeah let's say if you provide credit transfer services mm -hmm. then you must provide the sepa credit transfer in service, euro you know. yeah in euro yeah, yeah. in euro yeah. that's true and instant sepa instant credit transfer is not a mandatory scheme that's right so that's a, it means that a bank can choose to join that scheme or not mm -hmm. and um so that's the first thing banks since they are not obliged to implement it they think you know do we really have a business case here is it really interesting for the type of customers we have mm -hmm. will they a if we ask them to pay personally um i know you know i have friends they know that the service exists but many banks ask you to pay 1 euro if you uh use the instant payment service mm -hmm. and just for that reason many people don't want to use it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, they, it, it, so they will they will, because i mean of course if there's an urgency yeah. then you will use instant payment i think 
it's also, I would say, the habits. People know that, okay, if I send a credit transfer, it will take, you know, one day and the guy on the other side will get it. So the habits makes that people are not willing mm. to pay for the service. Agreed. And then the banks, since it is not an obligation to implement it, well, actually what we see in the landscape is that only major banks, you know, True. major banks, for example, in France, like mm -hmm. let's say PNP Paribas, Société Générale, Crédit Agricole. So they have provided it because, of course, for the image, you know, it's not, it is not that it's, 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 uh, it's making them, um, you know, it's generating a lot of revenue. Mm -hmm. I think it's not, and, and, Instant payment, they started with a limit of 15,000 euro, if, right. if I remember well. Yeah, something I think like they that, yeah. move to 100. They yeah. will move to 100. 100 yeah. And moving to 100 will enable more customers, particularly the companies, uh, to use it more, for example, mm. for cash pooling and, and so on. So um, I think that we just need to wait and see how the market, how the trend will evolve. But today, um, Small banks, clearly, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know personally. You know, small banks that have uh, decided to implement payment services as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have. If they do it, then they will probably just use the service of a major bank. You know, mm -hmm. they will just join this. They will join a major bank because you can you can also be an indirect participant yeah, right. in the instant payment uh, scheme. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's why. So, so first thing, it's not mandatory. Second thing, the customers are not willing to pay. A third thing, the amounts were just too limited at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Fifteen thousand seems quite huge for you and me, yeah. but the companies that really make. Uh, uh, the transactions and that can you can can transfer a huge amount of money for them it's not that uh, interesting yeah, yeah so for all for, for these reasons i think yeah instant payments you know i think it should it be will, it, the cost yeah. reduces definitely there will be more usage it happened in india like uh, it, it's it's free and uh, you know there is no limit uh, uh, for usage. So everybody started using it. Now it's very prevalent that even uh, the smallest of shops, uh, uh, which which operated in the informal sector, they which handled only cash, are now accepting uh, instant payments, which instant. is convenient That's for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, th this is the most important question that uh, everybody would be waiting for, I think. Uh, how does one start learning payments, Sushant Paula? So you uh, have been... Uh, <laughs> Uh, teaching payments and you know um, uh, writing about payments yes. and uh, teaching um, uh, in general so how does one start uh, uh, learning payments this is the question that I get often I wanted yeah. to pose to you as well so what what should one do uh, so, yeah I mean um, first of all I was very fortunate because I was, I didn't start with cross-border payments, mm -hmm. right? I really started with domestic payments. And then you're in domestic payments. You know, I started with credit transfer, mm -hmm. actually uh, receiving the credit transfer. And then only, um, you know, I look at the sending of credit transfer, which is actually an order mm -hmm. type of service, you know, that banks are providing to for example, if you are send, you are processing bulk files, then it's it's very different type of customers uh, that are using that type of service. So, um, I am I don't know. I think you graduated from an engineering school. That's as well. right. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it was very helpful because yeah. uh, engineers think in model in mm -hmm. models. You know, okay. we, we 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 learn a lot about. You know, no matter what we did during, um, at least when I was at uh, in the engineering school, was I need a model to explain mm -hmm. a system, how a system uh, behaves. You know, what are the key players? What can you know? 
influence the system to behave in a specific way. And I think that is a pretty interesting approach also with payments. Mm -hmm. And in payments, so I spoke first about domestic payments. So it's important to really have a picture, to, to draw a picture mm -hmm. of who are the key players, uh, what are their roles, you know, and how do they interact with each other? Why why are they there? You know, what, what do they provide as a service to mm -hmm. others? And when we speak about it clearly, we understand that it is key to understand how the payments market infrastructures in a country are organized. And we see that if you model, if you really want to understand how, for example, the SEPA credit transfer, the SEPA direct debit or whatever works, mm -hmm. and you, you, you draw the picture, mm -hmm. then you will see, you know, the four corner model. That's really, yeah, yeah. I think that if you are starting in payments, you should really draw the four corner model and understand each piece in the four corner model. Yeah. You know, when I say four corner, of course, we see, you know, we see the bank, the customer, and we see the market Much infrastructures better. that are interconnecting the banks. Yeah. So the clearing system, the settlement systems, and if you have it, then you should ask yourself, okay, uh, I have, I have a bank. The bank is providing the service to customers, mm -hmm. but there are of course different types of customers because the needs for an individuals, um, for individuals are not the same needs are for you know small and medium companies or or big corporations. Definitely. They don't really have the same needs. Yeah. So the banks must provide different type of services to serve the needs of different client segments. And you need, as payment professional, I think it's important to really have that in mind because yeah. that's what will influence the whole chain of services, Again. you know, the whole thing that actually the bank will do yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. meet those needs. Yeah. You know? And actually, in many banks, you have, for example, you know, retail banking, transaction banking, you know, cash management. And these are actually, uh, they are all dealing with payments, mm -hmm. but it is really not the same business. Yeah. <laughs> and I think as a payment professional, it's, it's very important to understand that. And then the bank interact, interacting with each other, then of course you have the clearing system, you know, where they will exchange, um, the 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 the, message, the payment message and at a point in time um the, the 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 exchange of message will just stop and then the multilateral clearing which consists of determining the the positions of each bank with regards you know throughout the clearing system that will be done yes. and then the clearing system is connected to the uh, set to the settlement system, which is generally implemented by the central bank. I think if you have that structure, mm -hmm. the good thing is that it is actually the same structure in all countries in the 100%, world. 100% agreed. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So if you understand it in one country, that's yeah. done. You can move wherever in the world. Exactly. And in five minutes, in five minutes you can explain how agreed. it works. Yeah. And then, then, once you have done that, so you see, when I really when I teach payment, I don't take people directly to the messages mm -hmm. because and, and because the messages are just the reflection. It, of, it, it may even change the yes. uh, next month. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, the format exactly. may change. Yeah, yeah. No, it, uh, that's so. The, the concept is, uh, is more important than the uh, agreed. <laughs> that's true. So I will first really speak about those the focus and then. Once you have understood, once you have understood that, then now you can take the message and say, okay, actually, to make a credit transfer, for example, um, you know, you will use the paying one. Uh, if you are a corporation, you will send a paying one to ask your bank to debit your account and credit beneficiary account, and the bank to exchange the payment with other bank will use the Pax Eight and so on. So, mm -hmm. and then we would start then digging into the message, yeah, and yeah. then. So you, then you, you can start talking, okay, what's XML, what's XSD, and, and, and all those things. But 
first thing is it's really important to understand the concept mm -hmm. and that's then domestic payments if you have that in mind that all countries in the world operate their market infrastructure and their, the payment actually is organized almost in the same way, same way yeah. then just imagine that you want to interconnect all the countries in the world mm -hmm. and they have one great network that we call SWIFT. Swift yeah. and, then, and then you will use, okay, if now I'm using SWIFT, well, I don't want to, to make payments as a bank. I will probably want to make payments in USD, in Japanese yen, in, in pound sterling. So I then need to interconnect, you know, with banks in all those countries. And then that's where the SWIFT networks come comes into play. Yeah. And cross border payments with those, you know, Nostro, Vostro uh, accounts. Yeah. And then, yeah, need if I'm a bank and I have accounts in different countries, then I need to understand what's happening on those accounts. Then I need a kind of reporting. So it's but again, it's really important to understand the structure, mm -hmm. to understand that hey. Um, if I am a bank and I want to make payments in, in another currency, then mm -hmm. I need to open an account in another country. Mm -hmm. And SWIFT is there. So SWIFT is a messaging system. But I, we always, there's no money in SWIFT. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think for the people who watch this video, it's important to understand that SWIFT is not a payment, payment system. Yeah. And yeah. people always, it's, it's not always, you know, clear, but... SWIFT is providing a very important service to banks mm -hmm. that are inter that are ex exchanging payment messages, mm -hmm. and that's messaging security. Yeah. So SWIFT is there to ensure that, hey, if I send a payment instruction to bank, you know, if bank A send a payment instruction to bank B, that the instruction will go from A to B without anyone interfering and SWIFT can guarantee that it is really the information that went from A that arrived to B. Mm -hmm. But money is on accounts at bank B or bank, you know, A or uh, let's say the money is not in the SWIFT network. So SWIFT is a messaging system. Yeah. I think that's also very important for, you know, payment professional True. to understand. True. Yeah, That's really my approach. Yeah. I, I was very fortunate because that's really what I did, actually. <laughs> uh -uh. So I started with domestic. <laughs> I started with cross-border. <laughs> and if, I, I'm not sure if you remember or not. You were the first person to conduct a payments interview for me. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it, it, it was the year uh, 2018 and I stepped into the... Uh, 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 hall and uh, the conference room and you asked about uh, what's a payment system and so on and you asked about uh, MT202 at that point I was very new <laughs> but I, I somehow managed and you are gracious enough to <laughs> let some of the mistakes go <laughs> thank you yeah, yeah. I mean actually um, when I, I I remember really my first project it was I wouldn't say um, you know it I couldn't know it. I wouldn't say it was a nightmare, but I was very frustrated because people were there talking and they were, you know, immersed in what they were doing. Of course, they were understanding each other, but I was completely lost. Yeah. Because sometimes yeah, they were sometimes. talking about a specific message. They were saying, hey, this field, this field. And I, I remember I went to... Um, uh, SEPA, you, you know, I, I, I read the rule books and still I couldn't understand really because I didn't have all this notion, you know, four corner model, bank, the exchange, for example, between banks uh, or the exchange between yeah. customer and the bank, the market infrastructure. Then if you don't have all that, frankly, you, you, you will read many, you will read many things out there and you won't understand. They are, for example, just look at the standard, the SWIFT standard are out there. Right, <laughs> many people. I agree. They, it is not because the Swiss standard is there that you think you will read and understand it. Yeah. There are just so many other things that you should grasp yeah. before you can really get what is inside. And so that's why I I really insist um, on the fact that 
it's really important to have those bases. I mean, it, it's really important to understand those concepts. And once you, under, you have understood them, you can deduce, you know, th there are things that you don't need to learn. You, you can by yourself find it out how yeah, it yeah. should be True. because you understand the concept. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's what I will say. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is definitely, uh, <laughs> Thank you this too. will definitely be useful. So uh, this is the year uh, 2022 uh, and uh, we cannot uh, ignore uh, ISO 222, you know, um, it's prevalent. At, I mean, sometimes instead of saying uh, uh, 2022, I say 222. <laughs> That's how prevalent it is in every, every, every premium. Don't say 20 or 22. <laughs> yeah, uh, Don't say 20 or 22. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, your thoughts on this uh, massive transformation that's happening around 11,000 plus institutions for SWIFT and uh, Target 2, um, which is one of the biggest market infrastructures in the world, which moves uh, billions. Yes. In, uh, so your thoughts on how, um, uh, how, how do you think um, this will play out? Uh, so that's point, uh, that's question number one. The second question is, what are the challenges the banks face in implementing it? Uh, so, yeah, the first question about, let's say, the impact, uh, it's huge. It's huge. Um, first, the, the standard is global. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, a standard is actually, it's, 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 it's a kind of language. True. I mean, absolutely. I agree. Yes, <laughs> it's a kind of language. So, the world can, can understand, let's say the payments world can understand each other more because we speak the same language, so, so to say. Agree. We, we are using the same standard. Of course, you have um, different uh, variations, right? For example, how do you call, how do you express a bank account in the US or in Europe. In Europe, for example, they say IBAN, all banks account are uh, IBANs. You know, you, you, you need to use an IBAN to, uh, let's say, as, as the account number yeah. of a bank account. Yeah. In the US, in, they have, you know, yeah. it's not the IBAN yet, but you can still use that in the ISO 2022 and that's what makes the standard so great that's and everyone that reads the, the the standard i mean everyone that see a file a payments file for example with ISO 2022 will understand right away mm -hmm. that okay this is the account it is not an iban it is a local format and so on yeah so i think that um that that, that common language worldwide is, is very major achievement. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, second thing, um, ISO 2022 will increase the STP. Mm -hmm. So it, it, mean, it means it will drive the cost down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> of course, um, there's a lot of work to make it happen. I mm -hmm. mean, um, the, pay, the payment software vendor should, you know, uh, understand the standard, should implement it well. But the fact is that you have quite a lot of data that you can transport, mm -hmm. and it is very easy actually to process it. You know, it's not like, for example, the MT format where sometimes you have different options, and he, in the ISO 2022, it's pretty clear what is what Correct. and where it should be. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's easy. Uh, it's easier to read uh, once you get used to it. Definitely, in in Swift there are option yeah A K F exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and no letter option as well. So, so <laughs> and many times you need to go back to the standard so that you are sure that yeah. hey this is what B or D or C or K or whatever means. Agreed. Agreed. Right? Agreed. So and and that's also really a great advantage. It means really that you and I will save precious time. Mm -hmm. you know, just imagine the amount, the number of time you need to go to the Swift MT uh, documentation to check that, hey, okay, in option D, that's what you could you can put. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have that kind of question really with the ISO 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 very, um, it's very interesting. Yeah. Now, 
we have, I think, another thing which is the, um, I would say, the compliance. Mm -hmm. You know, because in many regions, uh, the regulation, the regulators are asking banks to put more information in the payments mm -hmm. so that you no, know, you can, uh, let's Monitor. say, the regulators yeah. can know you know, what the payments is about and so on. And actually, it was not that easy to comply um, with those regulations. Or let's say, if you have not adopted the ISO 2022, it's not always easy because sometimes, particularly for cross-border payments, because if you receive a cross-border payment that you have to transform into domestic in let's say you because that happens uh, that you receive a payment in SWIFT and finally you you need to make a domestic payment mm -hmm. it's it of course it is still a cross border, but you need to make and then since you are it is not the same standard well data get lost yeah yeah you know I don't have data, you, you you cannot put the data where exactly you want yeah you, you, you need to interpret it, it, it's not really easy. Yeah. And that's where also I think the ISO 2022 will provide a, a really an advantage. Yeah. So once the world, I, I think it is being adopted in many countries and that's just, you know, the, the history, that's really what will, will happen. I know in the US, they are, they are planning to adopt it. In, in, many, in Australia, it's already adopted mm -hmm. in Europe. So um yeah that's i think that it, it it's clear clearly the a game changer yeah it's the direction and in we, which all payment systems it, are heading uh uh to iso 2020 yeah uh, that's true that's true yeah next. and one last thing yeah, one last yeah, yeah. thing <laughs> um i think that the iso 2022 is also enabling competition uh and innovation mm -hmm. you know you can it's it's it is flexible um of course new players can easily understand it the standards is you know it's free it's available um uh, you can create you know you can create just you can create Any your message. service yeah, and yeah. you know that it will be standard compliant mm -hmm. so and then many people will just have ideas and they can put it uh, into they can just implement something which was not just uh, possible mm -hmm. with the with the domestic standards that where it was really for banks it was but today non banks players are there and with open standards there are just many things uh, that can happen mm -hmm. uh, in the landscape and in the industry mm -hmm. so in that sense also the ISO 2022 is is, is great. But one last thing on the disadvantage. On the thing challenges, I, I wanted to. Yeah, it's the challenges. Yeah. The, you have, you know, I that was that was a colleague that was, um, you know, drawing my attention to that to the fact that actually to transport data, you have all those tags, mm -hmm. you know, the the, <laughs> and sometimes you are transporting more tags than the actual data itself. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's very very. Um, heavy, how, heavy uh, yes. in terms of uh, uh, this uh, size, file size. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Actually, Swift uh, in there, um, there is a book called ISO 222 for uh, dummies. <laughs> the Swift yes. In that book, they specifically talk about this issue uh, that the major problem with <laughs> is the data, the heaviness of uh, the file. That's uh, true. The flat that's file true. was much so, simple. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But I mean, today the computing powers are there. That's you know they Agreed. are even if they are saying it i mean the world is just moving towards it yeah. and but there will probably be you, you we will probably see and it probably already exists um um variations mm -hmm. you know let's say the iso 2022 but not with xml files yeah but with order of for example json files where you where you will have less um you know you don't yes. have you, you won't have the tax that that we have in the iso 22 but probably they will find a solution mm -hmm. not to to make it so heavy as it is today yeah the, but otherwise you know it's it's a pretty um 
it's a pretty uh, it's a bit interesting and there are many advantages definitely. in using the i2022 yeah. yeah and uh, then yeah. yes go, yes go i think we didn't speak about the challenges that much yeah the challenges for for i would say the traditional players the banks um is that you have a lot of legacy systems that mm -hmm. are not natively operating with the ISO 2022 True. standards True. which means that you need to transform ISO of course they can send only ISO 2022 outside because particularly in Europe because that is what you are as a bank you must do there's no other way today all the market infrastructure are operating with mm -hmm. ISO 2022 standards so you have to do it but they transform it when it goes out and when they receive it they transform it again into and sometimes the the data you don't have all the data so that's uh, that's that's really a major challenge mm -hmm. of course we can see many banks have already moved to um you know payment system that are natively handling iso 2022 uh, message formats but we still have a couple of it there's still some some way to go particularly for cross-border payments mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. I, I mean um sepa i think probably the majority they are doing sepa using xml even if some still need to change their you know core payment system so that they can uh handle natively the ISO 2022 format but definitely in cross border it is only start it is only beginning yeah and that's that will be the great um swift has provided three years mm -hmm. right but my view is that three years will not be enough uh for banks to, to move probably the majors will begin as usual mm -hmm. but the small will probably convert and only later will really implement system that can that can handle uh, 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 natively the yeah. ISO 2022 standards. So that's one. And then you need to train. I mean, you have the systems, but also the people that are operating those systems. They, Agree. They, <laughs> you need to train those people because yeah, it's just a, I will say, it is another way to work. It's another way to make payments mm -hmm. and uh, that that mindset, the, uh, there's a kind of mindset that you need to have yeah. to work with those ISO 2022 yeah. uh, <laughs> message formats. And that's where also I think that there is a, there's a huge, um, huge work there for for the players in, in, in the coming years. Yeah, in the, even the the, the the terminologies that that, that we use currently, like ordering customer, yes. is going to change. <laughs> ba even banks, the word banks is not uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, going to be used in the for we call we call it uh, financial institutions or payment service providers. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the whole landscape is. I mean, the, in the training part is pretty uh, important. Uh, I mean, that's not often talked about uh, in many. Uh, so uh, whenever they view a file, they uh, they have been used to sift empty file uh, they know the tax uh, especially the people who handle payments on a day-to-day -day basis they need to understand these new formats so the, uh, the, uh, the variations in that understand what xsd is That's to true. some degree uh, at least yeah, yeah yes and as we were saying before for example let's say uh, let's consider europe so the sepa area and then you have in sepa you have um switzerland mm -hmm. and in switzerland they operate a domestic scheme mm -hmm. in swiss franc you know in their in their local currency yeah. they are also using the iso 2022 but with the variations they have some variations there mm -hmm. and if you go to canada they do have variations there so it's also important of course we are talking about iso 2022 but it's very important to understand that you have variations and you really need to understand hey how do they for example you know name banks sometimes they have bank codes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in europe for example you use iban and big you know but in other countries they don't use big yeah, true. they use the kind of local bank code yeah. to you know to, to to identify a bank mm -hmm. so you those are things that 
you you need to understand i mean as a payment professionals mm -hmm. so that you can you know handle those um uh, message files properly yeah. so that's that's also something that's really i think that's a challenge actually if you are a, pre a payment professional and you need you know to, to you you work in projects uh involved where you have different countries for example i i worked on a project where i had actually switzerland okay. and and of course, I, I know the ISO 2022, how it is applied in Europe, but I really need to, to look at, hey, what do they do there in Switzerland? Yeah. Of course, the knowledge I had was, was very helpful, but unless you, you do that, you, you, you will implement things that are not correct. You know, you, you, you will do things that are not correct. Yeah. So it's, it's important really to get it and to do things right. Yeah. In India, if you come, uh, you will get French fries with uh, spicy <laughs> toppings. <laughs> it's like that <laughs> to some degree, I think. <laughs> I have a goal really to go to India. COVID really yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are in 2022. Probably before 2024, I think I will... I, I, I give myself two years. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Oh. We should have a meetup, you know, and uh, yes. definitely discuss more. <laughs> Uh, next... I, will tell, I will tell you know for sure, <laughs> Santosh. <laughs> so, uh, the next question is about future as well. So, uh, what do you think is the future of payments? So, that's where the cryptocurrency, central bank, digital currency, uh, and everything that sounds sci-fi uh, at this point comes into picture. So, uh, uh, if you are a payment <coughs> professional today, what do you think you should learn? Um, and what do you think is the future for uh, payments uh, uh, apart from the uh, you know uh, the, uh, the the current work that's happening there, so two hundred twenty two transformation once yes. that's over, what do you think is if, going to happen? Yeah. Uh, especially definitely um, the blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that that's really the technology that they use in cryptocurrencies. That's right. Uh, that's the technology that's there to stay, mm -hmm. and that will influence not only uh, payments. I will say the financial. Uh, services in general and even beyond. So I think that as a payment professional, it's worth really uh, looking at the blockchain, understanding the key concept mm. behind the blockchain and how um, it is being used, of course, in the, in the financial industry, but uh, also the, the, the different application um that you know either uh market infrastructure or banks or um other non-bank payment service providers mm -hmm. uh can do so blockchain is, is it's really a fascinating technology yeah. <laughs> you know for for me i don't know all the specifics but it's it's, it's pretty uh, interesting and then behind it actually we can say that the payments today is based clearly on the four corner model, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you have we have systems also operating in closed loop models that are there, yeah. you know, like yeah. PayPal or American, American Express, Express or whatever. Yeah. But the today, as a payment professional, I have to understand the four corner model, how it works. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even if people say that cryptocurrencies are they are going to, you know, they will play a major role. That <clears throat> that's true. But my view is that the the currency, let's say the government currencies, are not going to disappear. Yeah, yeah. They will still, at least in the next fifty years, they will <clears throat> they will still be there. Yeah. So we should not completely, uh, you know, just uh, say hey. The four corner model <laughs> will, will go no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I mean, at least we, we don't see it. I think we, when I look in when I look into the future, I can still see Swift. Yeah, I can still see you know the the, the, the traditional um, payment system operating as yeah. they do today. Yeah, because um, actually one one major uh, uh, issue. In in crypt with cryptocurrencies regulation, mm -hmm. 
And governments, they have a huge stake in payment systems. Mm -hmm. You know, they, of course, they have, they want their people to use their currency, but they also want to protect the people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you, you use cryptocurrency and you are not really aware of what you are doing, and then, you know, you, you may lose your money completely. Yeah. So, and of course, if you lose, for example, your secret key or whatever mm -hmm. on for cryptocurrency, there's no that, other way yeah, yeah. to get it. Yeah. So, and I think that makes also some people freak out. Mm -hmm. I, I personally know people who say, man, so if I put my, <laughs> if I put, let's say, the private key of my Bitcoin portfolio somewhere and I forget it, then it's over. And no one can can ever give me back. So that's also things. Probably um, we need. I think things will. There are services that will come. There yeah. are, probably if someone, um, you know, find a way to help people. Um, let's say to easily manage those cryptocurrency. There are already services existing today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again. Um, I think the people, even we are interested mm. a lot in cryptocurrencies, That's right. but just speak to people around you that are not, you know, working in payments or whatever. They, it, for them, it's really like, you know, you are talking about <laughs> yeah, yeah. something that, that, that is on another planet. Definitely. So we, we have, I think we, we just have to be careful. Um, uh, the technology, um, underlying cryptocurrency is very interesting and it is there to stay now um let's let's talk about cross-border payments mm -hmm. right also mm -hmm. because um we are used and actually that's what we see for example with swift the traditional way of doing cross-border payments is i have a bank that bank has a correspondent bank in another country and then, you know, we know how that works. Uh, I will say to the bank, hey, please transfer. If I'm in, in Europe, I can say hey, transfer $1,000 to the U.S. And then the bank will handle the change. And then, you know, they will instruct the bank in the U.S. to do the payment. Mm -hmm. But frankly, we should not. Um, it's very important to understand that players like TransferWise, you know, river transfer made, they are really changing the game in that area. Yeah. yeah. And my view is that probably we will the number of correspondent bank will decrease in the because people um players like wise, they you know they can make your cross border payments almost in second. Yeah. yeah. And they don't, they have that software where they can do everything. They have already, of course, they still have the network, mm -hmm. but it's really another logic. It is not going through Swift. You know, they, it, it's like you give them Euro here and they just debit their account in USD there and, 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 and make the payment. I agree, I agree. Yeah. So, so it, it, the, but of course, the regulation, I mean, um, that's where also they have to be careful mm -hmm. because... When the payment when the payment goes through the Swift network, it is clean. It is and 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 players like Wise they really need they, they have to be careful there to, to be sure that hey they are meeting all the regulatory requirements mm. so that people cannot just you know lounge, uh, make money laundry using their systems um, uh, 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 you know easily. Yeah, so, yeah. but clearly it is. It, it's going, probably we will see more players like that doing that or some players even using just using your services to do it and it will decrease the cost. What is Swift going to do? You know, I mean, Swift is a messaging system. Um, probably they, are, they will still be there, but um, I think that there will be more and more alternative um, to Swift. There will be more... And it's yeah, it's it, it's going to to impact uh, to change the the, the, the payment landscape. Sure. So, uh, it's, so cryptocurrency, cross border payments. Otherwise, on domestic payments, instant payment is going to. I think people will adopt it more and more, mm -hmm. even if because 
Um, but will it replace cash? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> will, I like cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will instant payment replace cash? Probably not. Yeah. I think that it's probably another, you know, we have other use cases where it's very interesting to have those instant payments and people will probably um, use it in, you know, for specific needs. Mm -hmm. But cash is there also to stay. Sure. I, mean, yeah. I don't see cash. Is Sweden started, I think, yes, it was Sweden. They made an, ex an experiment on, they, they said cash is die. We don't want... We want to become a cashless society. And then they came back. <laughs> so cash is still there. So yeah. because it's, it's really not that easy. People have their habits. Yeah, yeah. Even let's say here in Europe, um, the car payments are still, cash. the volume are yeah. still increasing. It's a, it is now that people are really adopting cars. In France, for example, mm -hmm. people were doing checks, checks payments yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. Because the government, you know, I think in the 60s or 70s, mm -hmm. um, um, made it mandatory for companies to pay salaries on bank account. And the bank account should, should have checks that are, give, that are given uh, to customers for free. Mm -hmm. So a customer should not pay. If you issue a check, it should be free mm -hmm. for you. Even today, mm -hmm. even today, it's free. So some the people still use checks quite yeah. a lot in France yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but of course, um, you have let's say you have people who who are young, quite young. They are more technology driven. But okay. all people are more you know they they, they have their habits. Mm. So probably we we'll, we we need to see one complete generation move <laughs> and be replaced <laughs> by the next before the, the habits you know before the no. the people can really adopt all the the the, the possibilities that we have today Definitely. in the landscape so yeah but this makes payments a very very interesting uh, industry yeah uh, uh, <laughs> thanks uh, so much uh, john I, I have a few last question rapid fire questions if you can answer it in a word or two uh, you know uh, because there are a few questions that i've written it down so uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay uh what is uh, the three most difficult concepts to teach in payments <laughs> um Correspondent banking. Also. So, for second, um, clearing and settlement. Mm -hmm. And third, I will say security. Yeah. <laughs> security, it sounds, you know, so since you said that I shouldn't speak. No, no, so no, no you can, you can definitely you can elaborate. Banking, yeah. Clearing and settlement security. Yeah. So when I say security, actually, you know, um, the key, I mean, um, you have the, um, you know, how do you say um, the word? You, you you know, we have, for example, in Swift, what we call the public key infrastructure, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And it is crucial if you are a payment encryption, professional to Encryption, that. sort of. Uh, en encryption is the right word. Yeah. Encryption, yes. So, yes. So, let me correct it. Correspondent banking, clearing and settlement and encryption. Awesome. So, public key infrastructure. That's Actually, really I wanted to talk about uh, uh, security on a on a special on a different forum uh, completely because that's a wide topic in the end. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So the next question um, is, uh, what is your favorite role um, in the world of payments? Is it uh, being a teacher, consultant, SME, manager, or a QA? <laughs> For sure, being a teacher. I, was, I, 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 I have the answer written here as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, being a teacher because, yeah, I, I love to, I love to, to share my knowledge mm -hmm. and I really appreciate to see when people, when their eyes open yeah. and they understand and they, you know, they enjoy their work more, yeah. they yeah. enjoy 
or what they do they so yeah teaching is definitely yeah something that i i prefer i'm a benefactor so <laughs> so th <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, thank you Santosh. and uh, the next question is uh, your favorite payment product or payment engine uh, like you can name one or uh, three uh, or two or three <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here <laughs> because you do uh, consulting with a lot of uh, um, uh, 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 products. But uh, if you have some favorites, um, you can talk about them and why. Uh... Frankly, um, I, I wouldn't use the word favorite okay. because they all have their advantage and disadvantages. True, true, true. So, I mean, we have the major, for example, uh fis mm -hmm. global is a uh, they are providing um you know software payments payment engines that are i would say pretty pretty good and um that are implemented in in in, in quite a lot of financial institution mm -hmm. uh today mm -hmm. so we have then we have also Finastra. Mm -hmm. um, then that's, I would say those two. I, I also, uh, I, I didn't implement. It was, you know, the IBM transaction manager. Mm -hmm. They have a payment engine also. Okay. They call yeah. it. And so that actually, it's it's really um, you have really the pro and the cons, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. So that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh, I I wouldn't. Of course, I think that frankly, um, at the end of the day, what is really important is is re it's not really the the product, but really the people, mm -hmm. because people can make something extraordinary. Even from a, 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 a an engine that is not, I would say, so great, mm -hmm. because they have worked pretty well, because they have done, you know, the concept, the they have worked on the requirements pretty well. They have, you know, um, worked with the vendor. Mm -hmm. They have collaborated. I have seen projects same same engine, you know. In on one side it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. On the other side it was a mess. It was a complete, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So I see what you're I, I just thought the day really, I think that it's, of course, it's important to build, to build uh, excellent product. But at the end of the day, the people, the knowledge, how you apply it really to make those projects happen. It, it, it's very, how do you implement a payment engine? It's, it's very important to have the great people uh, on your on your side when you work on a project, uh, my my experience is that it's much more important than the product itself mm -hmm. to have the people to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the probably the uh, final question of uh, today's chat, you know, uh, is there a payment system or a, a payment network or uh, uh, that that's your uh, you know go to or the one that you're. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's your favorite. Uh, again, I'm using the word favorite, but the one that you really like. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, SEPA credit transfer is, is probably your your golden thing, and uh, uh, you've written a book about it. And uh, for every, anyone who's listening to it, uh, do check it out. It's pretty interesting and amazing uh, to read. Uh, it's like uh, written in a, uh, an engaging uh, format, and, and I, I, I uh, Personally, since I know you, uh, I feel like uh, it's like you speaking me through that uh, book. <laughs> but is that a, a payment uh, system Thank that's uh, that's your uh, favorite? Yeah. Uh... So on the book, I am I am preparing a second edition. Yeah. So for the SEPA credit transfer book, I can already say say it here mm -hmm. because you know the book. Um, the, I mean, say the SEPA is changing. You know, mm -hmm. the scheme is changing. It's evolving. Yeah. And there are many changes that came since I wrote the book. So I'm preparing the second edition. I hope I will be able to publish it next year. Yeah. Awesome. Now, on on systems, on scheme, I think that um, I am, let's say, 
there are quite interesting scheme already in the in the SEPA area. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, of course, you have those SEPA payment scheme. And then you have scheme for high value payments. You know, for example, payments that you are sending to Euro One, um, and then payments that you are sending to Target Two. Mm -hmm. So that's Euro. But then, um, let's say Europe. Frankly, the payments landscape has changed quite a lot, mm -hmm. you know, transforming. Um, they have, just imagine that 20, let's say 20 years ago, each country has its own payment market infrastructures, mm -hmm. its own central bank. Mm -hmm. And and they are now one, you know, you have Target 2, that's the, 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 the settlement system operated by the European Central Bank. Mm -hmm. And you have the different, you know, central banks in the different countries that are all connecting. They are all handling the payments in target to itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a huge achievement. And that is what makes actually the SEPA possible. Mm -hmm. Because Agreed. actually, if you yeah. don't have the same market infrastructure, <laughs> impossible to have cool. a, a payment system as such. Cool. Now... I have really looked at what they did in Australia. Mm -hmm. I think that Australia is a, um, it's a fascinating case. You know? they, they don't really call it... Um, um, let me just remember the name. But in Australia, they, they, they built a kind of platform mm -hmm. and said... NPP, so, New Payment, payment Platform. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And because they they are anticipating the future needs. So mm -hmm. the, the way they did it was they said, okay, first we need a world, we are in a world that, that should be open. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't know all the type of services that, people will need in 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious always. I sometimes go and read, you know, what are they doing there? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's really fascinating how, how they did it uh, in Australia. It was a major project. Um, and they, they did actually, um, you know, we don't speak a lot about Australia, but it's also a, a, a payment where a, a country where you can find a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. if you're a payment professional, what mm -hmm. they do there um, in terms of, you know, services that they provide yeah. and how they have built their market infrastructures. It's a very, very, uh, uh, it's very, very uh, interesting. Yeah. And right, and nowadays, I'm looking quite a lot at P27, okay. what they are doing. Okay. I'm very fascinated by that. <laughs> yeah. The instant cross-border payments is, it's yeah, the, just the concept yeah. is, is so great. And I think that we are going to learn quite, they are learning a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they are doing something that's pretty innovative. And I think, um, yeah, people will, will just look at what they have done in a couple of years and it will be an inspiration for, mm -hmm. for quite many. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And that's what makes, again, payments so uh, I'm reading about uh, NPP today. <laughs> 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 well, uh, again, uh, thank you so much, John, for joining uh, thank us, you, everyone, today. It was great talking to you. Thanks for a valuable time. You, you are a very busy person. And, uh, um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, yes. Thank uh, you for we will, we will, uh, inviting if, if, me. Yeah, <laughs> I was glad. I was really glad to have this conversation with you. Yeah, if possible, we can have a part two of the session where I can collect some questions from every, from others and you know present it to you later in the uh, in, in the year. You know, at some point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. not? Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's... I am planning. So, um, <clears throat> the you know on on myself a bit. <clears throat> I. I have certified my training institute here okay. uh, in Paris, and I am planning to make another launch. Mm -hmm. Normally, in September, I will I will make another launch, and yeah, uh, of course, it is it is taking some time, but I am learning quite a lot. Of I mean, I'm giving a lot, but the the interaction I'm having with the 100%. people, you know, that that that, that are learning. It's very enriching for mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, 
I'm very happy to 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 be part of this and yeah. to share, you know, to share the knowledge, to share the experience. And I appreciate also what you do in the community for the community centers. So yeah. let's keep in touch and Definitely. let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Thanks, John. Uh, yeah. Talk to you later, and uh, yeah. Talk to you later. Take care, take care. and uh, yeah, stay safe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>